So good morning, everyone. Uh, I wish all of you a happy new year. I hope that uh, we will get rid of this uh, bloody corona this year. Let's hope so. Um, but still, uh, we think that uh, this, this initiative, which was born uh, during corona times, might uh, have a good future uh, afterwards. So um, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Amadeus Misuda today, who we, is going to be our speaker of the day uh, from the University of Wrocław, uh, Poland. Uh, so Amadeus started to study astronomy for his bachelor at the University of Wrocław, um, where he uh, studied the emission of stars in spectroscopic observations with the LAMOS telescope for his uh, bachelor thesis under the supervision of uh, Joanna Molenda uh, Zakovic. Um, then he turned to theoretical physics for his master's uh, that he did at uh, the University of Katowice. And uh, uh, then he specialized towards uh, cosmology for his master thesis, uh, studying uh, dark matter. Um, now back to astronomy for his PhD. Uh, he's in the fifth year of his PhD under the supervision of Professor Jagoda Dasinskia Daskiewicz. Uh, so uh, he's studying the evolution and pulsations <coughs> of beta Cephei stars and delta Scuti stars in uh, eclipse, eclipsing binary systems. Um, so his work is mainly focused on uh, theory and modeling using in particular the uh, MISA uh, eclipsing, uh, the MISA binary package, sorry. Um, so he's planning on defending and at the end of the year uh, and has uh, two papers already published, uh, one as first author, another one as second author. And he's about to submit a third one, uh, which you should, you should see uh, in task review in, in a few days. Um, so, uh, Amadeus, it's, um, your, the floor is yours. You can share your screen. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Rita, for the nice introduction. Hello, everyone. It's my biggest pleasure to, to be here. I'm a bit nervous, so please <laughs> excuse me for, for my uh, trembling voice at some time. Uh, okay, I'll just try to share my screen. Uh, okay, is it all right? Perfect. Okay, so uh, I'll start uh, just to turn my clock on. Uh, so uh, today I would like to draw your attention to my recent studies, which involve the evolutionary and seismic modeling of the Delta Scuti pulsators uh, that reside in eclipsing binary systems. Uh, my, my presentation will be mainly divided in, in two parts. Uh, in the first part, except for the introduction, of course, I'll describe my work on the uh, KIC uh, system, uh, KIC 1066-7083. And the second one will be devoted entirely to a BCAS system. Uh, both of them are eclipse and binary systems. Uh, the first one uh, has been already published uh, in the last year. And as Rita said, uh, the ABCAS system is awaiting uh, for the task review. I think it, it's safe to say that it should be available at the end of this week or at least at the start of, of the next week at the TASOC review. Uh, so just to give you some heads up, uh, the KIC as well as the ABCAS systems um, are the eclipsing binary stars of uh, algal type. Uh, the first of them, uh, the KIC system, uh, sorry, I won't repeat that number uh, each time because it's quite too long. Uh, so uh, th this KIC system uh, is actually a post-mass transfer detached binary, while the ABCAS is a, a semi-detached binary, which still encounters some uh, mass transfer events during its uh, rapid evolution. Um, both of those systems are fairly like each other. Uh, both of them uh, have a um, rapid period with with a value of about 1.2, 1.3 days. So they are fairly close uh, binary systems uh, with masses of, of the primary stars uh, of about two solar masses. Uh, the secondary masses vary a bit, but still are below 0.4 uh, solar masses. 
so uh, thanks to the recent um, space observatories uh, that uh, have an, an astonishing uh, photometric precision, uh, namely the Kepler and TESS, we obtained some uh, splendid observations for those two systems. Uh, so the KSC star was observed by Kepler uh, nearly by 1500 days uh, in the long cadence and uh, almost 800 days in short cadence, uh, while the ABCAS was observed by the TESS uh, telescope um, for uh, in, in sectors uh, 18, 19, and 25. Uh, resulting in almost, uh, well, over 51,000 observational points. Uh, in addition, ABCAS was observed by Stromgren uh, UVBY uh, observations, uh, which were done simultaneously. And uh, we obtained, well, not we, in, in the literature, the authors obtained uh, 1,350 points, uh, which were measured simultaneously. Uh, so, uh, after some uh, binary uh, light curve modeling from which we extract the parameters of those systems, namely, mainly the uh, masses, radii, uh, temperatures, and so on, uh, we performed the Fourier analysis for, for both of them. And in the case of KIC system, uh, we found uh, 590 frequencies. Uh, which were calculated up to the Nyquist limit. Uh, from that number, uh, 142 seem to be uh, independent uh, frequencies. Uh, and in the uh, case of ABCAS, uh, we have um, found uh, 112 frequencies up to its uh, Nyquist limit, uh, from which 17 seem to be independent. And what is most important in here is that um, the dominant frequency uh, in the case of ABCAS uh, is uh, actually a radial mode with a high possibility of being a fundamental radial mode, which will have a, a great impact in my future uh, um, slides. So uh, in the case of KITS, uh, KIC star, uh, we see an, an in, immense number of frequencies. Um, also in the G mode area, which is very important, and it will be actually tackled later on uh, in my presentation. So um, as you can see on the panels, left and right, uh, the middle panels are entirely devoted to combinations with orbital frequency, uh, which we have found plenty in both cases. Uh, I, oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, those multiple, com com multiple combinations with orbital frequency uh, can appear uh, given a couple of circumstances. Uh, so the first one is uh, that such behavior is actually known to occur in binary frequency spectra. Uh, well, as the orbital movement of the pulsator causes some systematic shifts uh, of frequencies due to the Doppler effect, uh, however, we checked for both of those systems, uh, of these systems, and this effect is actually quite negligible for, for the parameters of, of uh, our um, binaries in here. Uh, and the, the next two reasons are quite geometrical. So the first one is um, it is actually expected to find such forest frequencies surrounding the, the, uh, the dominant frequency with some uh, orbital uh, combinations. Uh, when analyzing the data coming from the bi uh, eclipsing binaries because of the uh, components distribution to the, to the total light, which actually is not constant during the whole uh, orbital period. It changes, it changes a lot, especially during the eclipses, when the pulsator is being obscured uh, by its secondary component, and that in turn can, uh, in fact, produce such forest of frequencies. Uh, however, uh, last but not least, uh, the second uh, geometrical effect is the most sophisticated one, at least for the case of KIC star, 
uh, is that such combinations with the orbital frequency can indeed appear due to some geometrical effects that would imply uh, that the star pulsate in, pulsates in a tilted pulsator fashion. Uh, so uh, unlike uh, in most cases uh, that the uh, Positional axis is aligned with the rotational axis of, of either star or, or a system. Uh, in in the tilted pulsators cases, uh, we have uh, that um, positional axis uh, tilted towards the orbital plane of of, uh, of a system, uh, causing one of the hemispheres to be pulsating. Uh, but I'll talk, tell about that uh, in, in the next slide as well and in the uh, one after it. Uh, so uh, in order to fulfill this third uh, condition, uh, we have to make sure that uh, actually the amplitude of, of or, the, or, or the amplitudes of pulsations uh, would change in the orbital phase. And to do so, we divided the whole light curve, uh, phased light curve, in some phase bins, and in each bin uh, we fixed uh, the um, frequencies and found their amplitudes and phases. And in the case of uh, KIC star, we found that except for uh, the dominant and the third frequency, which amplitude changes uh, in a fairly reasonable way uh, when the, uh, they have some sudden drops, uh, during uh, eclipses, uh, the amplitude of the secondary uh, frequency uh, is quite puzzling because it seems to be pulsating in antiphase to F1 and uh, F3. Uh, so uh, this, in fact, can be um, one of the cases uh, that we indeed have here uh, um, some um, tilted pulsational uh, fashion of pulsating in, in that primary star. Uh, what is more, we've, we searched uh, uh, such uh, behavior in the ABCAS system. However, we found no amplitude and phase modulation. Uh, so uh, in, in the case of ABCAS, uh, that uh, unequivocally un 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 excludes such a region of uh, this a forest of frequencies, uh, this on the right hand side. Uh, okay, so back to KIC for, for a while. Um, in 2013, uh, a paper showed up of Springer and Shaviv where, where they theoretically uh, explored the possibility of, of uh, inducing some pulsations in, in tidally distorted uh, components of binary systems. Um, and in, the, uh, in their work, um, they conclude that for uh, solar mass stars distorted uh, in, in binary systems, uh, pulsations would in fact group in some circumpolar strip that is located uh, in the hemisphere facing outwards the system, let's say uh, L3 point. Um, later on in 2012, uh, 20, uh, Gerald Handler found uh, the uh, that um, found first theory, uh, first observational proof um, that such stars actually um, are present in our universe. Uh, however, their the, the conclusion uh, their conclusion was uh, that uh, this star that they found uh, shows some amplitude uh, and phase modulation. However. Uh, confined within the uh, hemisphere facing towards its companion, towards the barycenter of a system. Uh, analyzing the behavior of, of the uh, secondary uh, frequency in, in the KIC system, we may have uh, some indications that, in fact, we, um, it, it can be uh, connected with some uh, pulsational grouping as well. Uh, however, in the circumpolar strip, uh, not located out, uh, located outwards uh, the, the the system. However, uh, passing through poles. Uh, so this is one of the uh, very interesting results uh, from from uh, our previous analysis. Uh, and this, to be honest, is um, at the end of the let's say introduction. Uh, from now on, I would like just like to. Uh, 
tell a little more about the very spirit of my presentation, which is the binary evolution modeling. And uh, as I was talking up to now about the KI system system and uh, ABCAS almost simultaneously, because up to now their analysis was quite the same with some, some uh, other results. Uh, so from now on, uh, the division will be more distinguished. Uh, because uh, in the case of KIC and ABCAS, uh, the later analysis uh, a little bit varied because of some facts uh, that I was talking about before, namely, for example, the um, dominant radial mode found in the ABCAS system. Uh, so, um, in order to proper uh, to properly model uh, the binary evolution of of a system. We need a package uh, that includes the impact of the binary interaction on the evolution of, uh, of both of the components. Um, such package, uh, for example, Mesa binary uh, allows to construct uh, a binary model and to evolve um, the components uh, simultaneously while still considering some, uh, some important uh, interactions that uh, are going on between them. Uh, in particular, I mean the um, incorporation of such uh, effects like, uh, or sorry, uh, the incorporation of effect of uh, angular momentum uh, on the uh, on the system, namely the mass transfer, gravitational wave radiation, uh, the loss of angular momentum via, for example, mass loss via stellar winds. Uh, but not only, uh, also the spin orbit coupling due to tides and uh, last but not least, the magnetic braking. Uh, so on the um, diagram I show on this, uh, on this panel, um, we can see uh, the um, donor evolutionary tracks that were computed as a result of the binary evolution of components. Uh, while the most of the parameters used for for cal calculations of those tracks, uh, all of them, uh, can you can you confirm that you can see my uh, cursor? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, all of those tracks begin at that point uh, at the ZAMS point. Uh, now uh, now on we have the evolution through the main sequence and something later on after the overall contraction. However, uh, one of the parameters that uh, change in all of those uh, tracks uh, is the initial orbital uh, period value. Uh, we can see that moduling its, its value, we can uh, enforce the time of the uh, onset of mass transfer, which is depicted with red uh, stars in, in here. And uh, we can see that uh, its value triggers uh, the, the start of, of the mass transfer later, uh, er, earlier in the, uh, in the evolution or, or later on. Um, in fact, we, we have uh, here some uh, division be between case A and case B of mass transfer. Um, those cases uh, describe the mass transfer that starts uh, during the main sequence phase or after it. Uh, so um, here with the error bar, we can see the uh, HR diagram position of the secondary component uh, of a KIC star. So in order to fit some evolutionary tracks crossing that part of, uh, of um, hertzsprung russell diagram, uh, we need to ensure that it, except for masses and, and other parameters, uh, is that one of the main parameter uh, main parameter uh, that distinguishes uh, the uh, uh, evolution between uh, case A and case B is in fact the uh, initial value of uh, that initial uh, orbital parameter uh, or orbital uh, period uh, that is given at the ZAMS uh, start of evolution of, of, of a system. Uh, so uh, I allowed myself uh, in here to, to put such a bold um, statement that binaries are greater than uh, other stars. However, uh, it just means that binary system in our case uh, in here are just a great tool for imposing some limits, not only on the parameters that describe the, the components, and the physical and absolute parameters of them, uh, such as initial masses, initial orbital period, uh, 
but also the parameters that characterize some physical processes, some free parameters such as the alpha MLT value from the mixing length theory or the overshooting value, uh, which is nowhere to be found uh, using the first uh, principles. But also the binaries allow to study uh, some um, orbital parameters. For example, the beta parameter, uh, which is the uh, parameter describing the mass transfer efficiency uh, in the system, namely how much of the uh, accredited material, or, or the not, sorry, not accredited material, uh, of the transferred material on the um, acceptor is, be, is being expelled uh, of this, uh, from the system uh, as, as a form of a fast wind uh, from the vicinity of, of acceptor. Uh, so in order to, to model uh, the binary model in the KIC system, <clears throat> uh, we constructed uh, some several grids of evolutionary models. Each of these grids uh, adopted the initial parameter ranges uh, from the table uh, on the right hand side on this panel. Uh, and the um, way of analysis was as follows. It, it, was, it was divided uh, for, for quite several steps. Uh, so in the first step, we, we built um, a sparse grid and we looked for, for some uh, global minima, like in this uh, panel, let's say, uh, for, for the donor mass uh, or, or for uh, initial period value. Uh, whenever we found such a global minimum, uh, then we uh, constructed more dense grids uh, in order to, to uh, explore these uh, space parameters more densely. Uh, however, in order to do that, we uh, from, from the models that we um, computed, we chose only those models that in such in, in some uh, time of their evolution, uh, do reproduce uh, the orbital, um, the observed orbital period value of the binary. Uh, here is 1.23 days. And for those moments uh, in the evolution, we calculated the, disc the discriminant d square as, as, uh, in, uh, in, uh, as shown in, with the equation. Uh, that discriminant uh, tells us how well the masses and radii are being reproduced uh, by, by the, the model uh, that we uh, calculated at the observed value of orbital period. Uh, so this is that value that uh, was here uh, shown as, as the discriminant uh, telling us where to find some global minima. Uh, so uh, later on, we, we uh, calculated some more dense grids in the vicinity of the global minimum in order to find a unique solution that uh, would uh, or is uh, reproducing our system at its current form. Uh, so here we have a couple of, of panels, but uh, I just wanted to stress on the top left panel <clears throat> that we encountered some difficulties uh, while reproducing the donor radii, uh, radius of, of the donor. Uh, while keeping all parameters uh, found from the previous section where we found the unique solution of, 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 the, uh, of the model that reproduces uh, more or less or more our system, uh, we found that keeping fixed all the parameters, uh, namely the masses, the alpha MLT value, uh, overshooting and so on, uh, only changing by only changing the initial uh, orbital period value, we were able to, to find a unique solution fitting within three sigma uh, of observed uh, uh, values of masses and, and radii of both uh, components. So in fact, this uh, orbital value um, is, uh, is very important during the binary evolution uh, because as we can see in the uh, left lower panel, uh, there is a clear dependence on the final masses and, and initial uh, period of, of the components given the initial period of, of uh, the system. 
So too high value of uh, initial period would allow us to reach the uh, RGB phase uh, at which the um, orbital period would uh, reach uh, tens of days in a cooling phase later on in the evolution. However, in the other hand, uh, too low value of, of the um, initial value, value of orbital period, period would cause uh, a slow rate of mass transfer uh, at the binary at which the donor uh, radius and the system orbital period are ever dropping and decreasing. Uh, and we simply don't want that because we have an established uh, position uh, of, of the uh, secondary component on the HI diagram. We have the masses, radii, and the uh, given uh, observed uh, value of, of orbital period. And we just simply want to fit into those values. Uh, so uh, the um, one boundary that is uh, very distinct in here is the bifurcation period that uh, bifurcates between the ever cooling phase, ever dropping um, radius and, and uh, orbital period, and the uh, some other um, moments of evolution uh, for, for for the uh, donor star. Uh, on the right hand side, we can see an IGI diagram with the final uh, tracks that we were obtained for, for uh, the KIC system. Uh, the blue and the orange track uh, mark the donor and the acceptor, uh, respectively. Uh, in addition, we show here the evolution of, of a single uh, evolution track. Uh, with the initial value of mass uh, 2.1. So it fits the, the observed value of mass uh, that we actually observe in, 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 during, uh, well, now. And uh, with two dots here, uh, we have two best fitting models. The orange model uh, shows the best model uh, of the binary that fits all of the previously discussed parameters. And the gray dot uh, fits all of those parameters uh, which are uh, limited into the single case, of course, mass, uh, radius, and the temperature of, of a primary. Um, and uh, for those two models, we calculated uh, some, some um, additional things. Uh, but in the first place, we looked for the internal profile of the abundance uh, uh, of, of elements. Uh, actually, only the top panel in here is the most important one, because uh, here we can see the comparison be between uh, the primary star coming from uh, both binary and single uh, modeling. Uh, with the dashed lines, we see the single model, uh, and with the uh, solid lines, we see the binary model. And while the, at uh, the closest vicinity of, of the center, uh, their profiles are quite the same. Uh, at the, uh, well, more, um, further parts of, of the star, further layers, uh, we can see that the ratio between helium and, and hydrogen in the case of binary uh, model, uh, reverses. So uh, in uh, in the case of those uh, of these models, we calculated uh, the pulsations from L equals zero up to four. And while at the uh, top panel, which corresponds to the single evolution uh, model of a primary, we can see that all uh, frequencies are stable. Uh, at its bi binary counterpart, we can see that uh, not only we acquired some unstable frequencies in here, which later on, oh, sorry, which later on uh, can be uh, rotationally split in order to, to cover the whole observational uh, range of, of, uh, of uh, uh, frequencies. Uh, but what is most important we can see that we were able to obtain some G mode excitation in the lower parts of frequency values in here. So this is the very, very important part for the KIC system, uh, where I in fact uh, stressed in, in the, the beginning that we have uh, some 
observed values of frequencies uh, in the low parts of uh, frequency regime. Uh, for the first time here, we were able to show that um, modeling such systems, such closed systems uh, in a binary way, which by the way, speaking, it should always be done like that. We shouldn't neglect the um, common interactions between parameters. Uh, we are in fact able to, to um, obtain some hints how to uh, um, obtain instabilities <clears throat> in the low frequency regime. Uh, okay, so that is all uh, if it's uh, for the KIC system. Uh, now let me skip to ABCAS. Uh, the, the beginning of our analysis was not that different. Uh, we uh, also um, constructed some grids of models, adopting uh, some uh, parameter ranges, which in fact are not quite the same as, the, uh, as in the case of KIC, uh, because here we freed the alpha male T value, uh, metallicity, uh, and the initial hydrogen abundance values. And for each, uh, grid that contained 50,000 evolutionary models, we, well, sorry, for each uh, grid, uh, we assumed the value of alpha MLT, uh, exploring, of course, the, the whole adopted value from zero up to 1.8. And each of that grid, uh, this grid consisted of 50,000 evolutionary, evolutionary models so exploring the whole alpha MLT value, we, we obtained uh, almost 1 million models of, uh, of the, binary, uh, the binary models of, of uh, ABCAS system. And actually, they were uh, searched in, in, the, in the same fashion as in the KITS system. All of those had to reproduce the observed value of, of orbital period. And for those uh, period, uh, the, for these moments in, in evolution, we calculated the discriminant uh, that reflected how well the masses and radii of components are uh, being reproduced by, by the model. Uh, so uh, in this part where we uh, kind of dropped the uh, iterative way of constructing the grid, uh, instead we allowed the parameters to be randomly chosen from a uniform distribution with some boundaries, uh, we were able to, to explore the uh, space uh, parameter, uh, parameter space more densely and more uniformly, uh, at least in, in the case of, of some of the parameters. And uh, on the left panel, we can see uh, that there are visible some dependencies uh, that the model prefer uh, the value of, of initial period to be, let's say, well, okay, mm, between two and, and five uh, days uh, with, with masses uh, also uh, in, in some uh, regime. However, we can't see any preferences uh, that would um, tell us what the value of uh, beta parameter, the, the mass transfer effectiveness or the overshooting MLT uh, value should be, as well as the internal composition profile uh, of, of a star. <clears throat> uh, so from those models that reproduce uh, the orbital period and the observed values of masses and radii, we chose one and uh, we, uh, well, I. <laughs> Uh, present here the evolution of, of that system on the right uh, hand side panel. On the top panel, we can see HI, HR diagram with uh, the marked position, observed position of the components. Uh, and on the bottom panels, we can see the time evolution of uh, masses, radii, and uh, orbital period uh, with some uh, vertical st uh, horizontal strips. Uh, that reproduce the observed uh, values of masses and radii within uh, three sigma errors. Uh, so we can see that in, in this point where it actually uh, mm, reproduces, the system reproduces the observed value of, of orbital period, uh, all masses of the components as well as radii 
uh, actually fit in their observed uh, ranges. So, uh, so for all of the models uh, that we extracted from this procedure, uh, there were 58 models uh, that fitted in masses and radii in the orbital period. Uh, we calculate the radial pulsations for the primary component uh, using the non-adiabatic non linear code of Professor Wojciech Jimbowski. Uh, and we plot the um, fundamental mode frequency uh, for these models uh, on the left panel. Uh, while that frequency varies in the range from, let's say, 40.5, sorry, up to 18 cycles per day, uh, we, from that sample, selected uh, three models that lied uh, in the closest vicinity of, of the observed value, which is 17. 1564 uh, cycles per day for the dominant value of uh, frequency observed in the ABCAS. And for those, uh, for these three models, we uh, plot the time evolution. Uh, well, not time evolution, it's the evolution um, connected with the uh, evolution of, of the uh, effective temperature. So uh, as we can see, the, the changes of, of this uh, evolutionary, uh, of this uh, frequency evolution uh, are not like the uh, evolution that we are used to uh, for the radial modes, where the slow evolution during, for example, the main sequence stage causes slight, however, monotonic changes in the radial mode uh, frequency. Here, on the other hand, uh, we, we can see that our uh, binary model uh, counterpart, counterparts uh, encounter some rapid uh, changes that by no case can be described as monotonic. Uh, in fact, those changes are very much connected with the dynamical, uh, not dynamical, uh, with the rapid changes uh, that are uh, occurring in, in our system, uh, namely the mass transfer connected uh, changes. Uh, so uh, as we can see, those three uh, frequencies lie in the very close regime of, of the uh, observed uh, frequency. However, they not reproduce it within, uh, for example, plus minus resolution uh, range. Uh, so in order to do that, we adopted the, uh, the parameter parameters from, uh, from these models. And by change, uh, keeping all of them fixed while changing one of them, we tried to fit uh, the, the frequency uh, to the observed range, which we, uh, in each of these uh, panels, uh, mark with uh, this vertical, uh, horizontal um, orange stripe. Uh, so we can see that uh, while keeping all the parameters of, of the binary models fixed and changing only one of them, we are in fact able to, um, to cause the frequency uh, of the fundamental radial mode or just, a fundam or just a radial modes in general to change. Uh, all of these uh, models of course, fit uh, still uh, within the masses, uh, observed masses and radii values uh, at the given observed uh, orbital period. And uh, using some, uh, some regressions here, we are in fact able to um, extract the ranges of parameters uh, that are able to reproduce uh, our uh, system at its current form. So, um, we can see that this system, except for some, some uh, initial values of uh, masses and uh, orbital period, uh, prefers the value of alpha MLT uh, to be between, well, greater than uh, 1.2, less than 1.4. Uh, <clears throat> however, none of them, uh, none of these models uh, prefer the conservative uh, transfer as uh, was shown uh, in, in, in the literature that a uh, couple of the systems can be uh, mapped using the 
conservative system uh, with the age of uh, about three uh, giga years for that system. So um, as just for the last slide, I know, I know I'm running out of time. Actually, I've exceeded it right now. Uh, but uh, I wanted to show a last slide uh, that uh, is nowhere to be found in the literature. Um, as we are used to see the lines of constant frequency uh, here as the, in, in the inset, that in the case of um, single evolution uh, is actually a straight line uh, in the single uh, straight line. Uh, in the case of binary systems, where uh, we have some rapid changes that uh, <clears throat> impact the uh, binary evolution, the binary composition, uh, not composition, internal structure, and so on, we observe not one, but at least three, in our case here, three, uh, three lines that are not constant, uh, not, not straight, uh, that, rep uh, that show the constant uh, frequencies uh, for the observed uh, range, uh, for now, for here is is just uh, for seventy point fifteen forty uh, sixty four cycles per day, our observed dominant value. Uh, these three lines are uh, connected with the uh, number of of the crossings that the evolution of frequency encounters during um, uh, this panel. So each time it crosses this value, it actually produces some uh, constant frequency line as can be seen uh, in this panel. So, okay, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I um, promised you some references for, for the papers. So for the KIC as a star, it's already been published last year. In ABCAS, it's uh, during the final touches uh, procedure and should be um, sent to the TASOC review uh, in the in the next uh, this or next week. Uh, as for the future project pro prospects, uh, of course, more uh, eclipse in binaries still uh, a way to be tackled, and this in turn in the future may allow uh, to draw some more general conclusions on the evolution of binary stars and in, to indicate some directions that we have to undertake in order to further develop the uh, asteroseismology of binary systems. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Amadeus, uh, for a, a very interesting talk. Um, so we have time for questions. Yeah. <laughs> so I encourage, uh, yes. So we have the first uh, question by Gerald. Please go. Hi, Hi, thanks very much for the presentation. Um, I was wondering about the Kickstar when you're doing the um, analysis of the uh, mode stability. Um, yeah. Very nice oh. that you um, could fit the G mode. Maybe I should also turn on the video. Yeah, also, but um, I see you also have, um, uh, you don't get instability for the higher, um, um, the, the scooty frequencies. So uh, I was wondering whether you would at some point consider turbulent pressure as an additional driving agent to maybe get uh, yes so the uh, i was wondering about that however um there are very few codes that in fact um, incorporate the turbulent pressure uh, that may have some impact on the um, on the uh, higher uh, frequencies uh we didn't try any of of it, of it but we are aware of that uh, of this so uh, when you're using one of those codes we can actually be able to to uh, make the uh, higher frequencies unstable okay um so I have one question uh, waiting for the audience to, to warm up. Um, so it, it's, um, I think it, it's uh, on the one before last slide. Uh. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. So the slide where you show the evolution of uh, the fundamental frequency with... with uh... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay. 
this one? No, before that, before again. Yeah, here. here. Okay. Yes, I, I was wondering. Uh, so you, you said that you computed the frequencies with with Voitex uh, uh, method. So mm -hmm. I was wondering what exactly you include uh, in in those calculations. Uh, does it take into account, for instance, the distortion induced by um, by the, the uh, by the binarity? uh the the tilt of the of the the axis and things like that no no it's just a simple code that uh just incorporates the uh Corollis force on the on the pulsations however none of the binary uh um, interactions here are um, taken in account okay thank you so i see we had uh, Jörn uh raising his hand before and then, and then uh, andrew yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for a very interesting talk. It's really a heroic effort to look into these binary evolution tracks that are so complicated. I'll, I'll never, yeah. never get my head around that. Uh, just one specific question for now. Uh, where in, in the Kickstar, you get this strong enhancement of helium in the envelope, which of course helps the instability. Yeah. Uh, so where, where where does the helium come from? Uh, from the binary com from the binary component. So it's actually stripped down so deeply that yes, actually it's, it's that has just been, stripped uh, down uh, up to the just helium core. Yeah, and now on it's it's uh, with very little uh, of of the uh, outer envelope left of hydrogen envelope left. Uh, but yes, it, it all comes from the, the uh, binary component, from the secondary component of, of, of the system. So, so that component is actually now a very low mass. Uh, it's actually 0.2 solar masses, so yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Very, very interesting. Uh, one, one could also discuss, but that's really going very far, the effect of the distortions of the stars and, and the... Uh, all aspects of the uh, modeling, really, uh, especially, of course, the oscillations. Have you given any thought to, to that? Uh, sorry, could you repeat? Because something froze. Oh, uh, because in, in such a close binary system, the stars must be quite strongly distorted. Yeah. And, and what is the effect of that on the uh, oscillation frequencies? Uh, well, I'm not quite sure about that. Um... Hmm. You're you're asking about the impact of of the um, binary distortion to to the frequencies, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, so so for the uh, first, um, I think that uh, this behavior of of uh, the secondary frequency uh, with the amplitude and phase. Um, modulation can be uh, strictly connected to the binary uh, nature of, of that mm -hmm. system, as was shown by Geralt. Um, well, and I think that that's it, because the, the, the uh, helium enrichment, uh, of course, uh, can be able to, to enhance the instability of the GMOD frequencies. But I don't know really how much the distortion would uh, take into account in here. Well, uh, well it's certainly something to look at in, in, in more detail, but uh, this is a very, very impressive start to, to watch this analysis. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, and I guess that uh, there will be a kind of lift of the degeneracy due to the fact that the orbit is inclined uh, uh, with respect to the, the rotation axis. And there will be a lot of interesting effects to look at also. Mm. Uh, change of the shape of the resonant cavity will we'll also uh, shift the frequencies. I, I think some people in, in, in Liège are actually looking at, at that, but I, I, I let them. That's cool to know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so it's Andrew's uh, 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 time to ask. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So thanks uh, for the great talk. I have um, perhaps a naive question. In all your HR diagrams, where you show uh, mass evolutionary tracks, binary evolution tracks, yeah, what is the effective temperature that you're plotting there? 
is this the polar temperature or equatorial temperature? What does uh, MESA give you? Uh, I think that this is uh, some mean value of, of temperature. I'm not quite sure. I, I'd have to check it, but I think that this is the mean, mean value of of, uh, of a star. As, I think I think it's very important to check, given that you compare the tracks to observations, because particularly for the uh, Kik 1066 star, I know that temperature was inferred spectroscopically, and therefore it's an equatorial temperature. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll check it. Um, and we had a question in the chat from Andy Moya. Uh, so he's got two questions, actually. I I'm reading for, for him because he has no, no microphone. Uh, first, why do you deal with all the orbital frequencies and you don't clean or remove uh, the first eclipsing model from the light curve? Well, I do. It seems to be uh, very clear. And by removing it, you may see more interesting frequencies. So that's his first question. Uh, let me have a glimpse on that question as well. Why do you do? Uh, all right. Well, I do remove the binary uh, eclipse model, but uh, they are still there. And uh, these are not the um, orbital harmonics uh, per se. Uh, but the combinations of frequencies and the orbital harmonics. So given the uh, given some uh, geometrical effects, they are still present even after um, removing the, the model, if that's what uh, you are uh, actually asking for. I think so. Um, then he had another question. Uh, why do you assume um, that the frequency with the larger amplitude is the fundamental radial mode, and how do you know that? Okay, uh, so um, I know from both literature and our um, results that uh, the fundamental mode is, sorry, the, the, uh, the most prominent frequency is indeed radial mode, because we, we double-checked. And we also done uh, our own uh, frequency, um, well, identification, mode, ident mode identification. Uh, however, as to for the question about the fundamental uh, radio mode, uh, well, for, for that uh, observed regime of temperatures, uh, let me, yes, here. Uh, this is the only possibility because, because uh, the uh, higher overtones do not fit in, in, in that observed uh, regime of temperatures. And also their uh, values are, are a bit uh, larger. So uh, if, if that, of course, uh, answers your questions fully. If no, please let me know. Okay. Anyway, Andy can also, uh, yes, he says, okay, thanks. Uh, so uh, he can always uh, send you an email. Uh, I Thank see you. we will take a question from uh, Zhao Gu, please. Yeah, uh, thanks for a nice work. Uh, so uh, I think uh, I noticed you are using very small step size in the uh, mass in your grids, like a 10 to the minus three. Yeah. So, and I was wondering whether you can still model, uh, get a like good model within three sigma by using let's say 10 to the minus two solar mass or do you really need this small size well actually the this um, step is not a step per se uh, it's just the numerical precision at which uh, i draw some value from the uniform uh, from the uniform uh, distribution of, of parameters within some given ranges uh, I've uh, run some similar computations, but uh, that uh, were not um, that didn't base on on some uh, random approach, uh, more than uh, more uh, with some iterative steps. And yes, I was able to to obtain some models fitting in mass uh, and radius uh, using that uh, approach as well. However, I think that um, using the random uh, step 
gives us uh, more um, bigger or well, bigger larger coverage of of the uh, parameter space of of the uh, parameters ranges that we that we adapt in here but yes i was able to do that uh, even uh, lowering the step up to 10 to minus 2 Okay, thank you. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I think we have no more questions. So I would like to thank again Amadeus for a, for a very, for me, exotic talk because I'm really not used to binary stars evolution. The bottom line is that I, I need to learn how to read the binary evolution in, in HR diagram. <laughs> um, Feel free to contact me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, okay, so I, I will thank all of you very much for your attendance, and uh, and uh, so keep. Uh, I, I will keep you informed. Uh, we will most likely resume uh, for the seminars in uh, in in a month from now, and uh, we will give you more details uh, very soon. So thank you all for. Uh, for being still with us uh, and and see you uh, see you next time. Yes, thank you for attending. It was my biggest pleasure to to being able to present some of my results uh, to you in here. Thank you thank for you. for invitation as well. <laughs>